Hi you guys, welcome to another First Impression Friday where I review an entire collection of sewing patterns. Today, a long time coming, we are finally going to be looking at Allie Olson's collection. Um, some of you that may have been sewing for a while might remember a website called Indie Sew where it was like a marketplace for all kinds of indie patterns. Um, many indie pattern brands. Allie was the brains behind that and I remember whenever she had to shut that down it was devastating because that was such a reliable resource for any and all indie sewing patterns. She always made samples so you could see what they looked like. She only added like the best of the best so you knew what you were ordering from them was going to like come together nicely. But in closing down Indie Sew, she was really able to kind of focus on her pattern designs, which was kind of a relatively newer thing for her back then. She's got, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 patterns at this point. But before we get into those, I want to show you just how much of a resource her website is because she comes from that background of um, like you know, being a resource for sewists. And so she kind of combined those two in a way. Um, so first things first, she's got this thing called Fabric Files. If you are trying to learn about fabrics, this is a great place for you to go. Um, uh, that one, not so much, but she does have tips for sewing with bulky knit fabrics. I actually use some of these tips um, now uh, consistently on my serger. Um, and then some information on fabric weight, but then you get into like each type of fabric. So if you're curious about what French Terry is like, you can go to this blog post and it's broken down into like kind of like a very scientific thorough breakdown of each fabric. So we've got the characteristics, we've got how to sew with it, we've got how to care for it, how to buy it, and what kind of garments you can make from French Terry. Now you can't obviously feel the French Terry, which I know is so important for so many of you that are trying to learn how to sew or how to like learn about fabrication, but this will get you very close. Maybe buy a sample from fabric.com and you know, touch and feel it while you are um, reading through the blog. Um, so she's got four pages of those, all kinds of different um, fabrics. Um, and we talked about Ali a little bit. She is a very like sustainably kind of conscious person, um, which I love. This was a section that I thought was super interesting. Okay, so she has um, this little giving back section where she says that they donate 5% of all net profits um, to the charity of their choice. And, he, and she's very transparent about where they have donated. So that is all really nice and lovely, right? But once you get down into the nitty gritty of it, you can see that in May and June of 2022, she had no profit at all. So she was not able to donate anything. And I think it is just so enlightening for a small business owner to indicate all the months where they were profitless. I think we assume that especially, I don't know, maybe it's because it's Allie and she's been in business for so long and her aesthetic is so clean and polished. You just assume she's like killing it, right? So it was so interesting to me to see that, you know, for two months, she literally didn't make a penny. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, what? that's what Shop Small is all about. It's about preventing months like this for small businesses. And the next time you go to buy a pattern, even if it's on sale at Joanne, maybe consider, you know, I bet so, I bet so-and-so has a pattern similar to this um, that I can buy. So with all of that said, I want to start looking at the sewing patterns. Now you can see here, she has them broken down into digital sewing patterns, the ones that are available in paper, which we are not gonna cover. Um, and then the curvy sewing patterns, which I think will be indicated as we go through here. But if you only want to shop curvy, you can just click this, which I think is really nice. And it's a, sort of a mental thing when you are a curvy person and you're trying to buy anything, um, going, seeing a pattern and you're like, oh my God, I love that pattern. And then realizing they don't have it in your size is such a bummer. So I love that she has this where you just click on this and you know what is available in your size and that's it. All right. So starting off with her digital pattern collection. So first up, we have the Kila tank. And actually, I want to point out something too. I also really love how you have the like beautiful photography, right? Which a lot of indie sewing pattern companies are known for. But when you 
um, roll over the photo, you get the line drawing, which instantly gives you the technical details of the pattern. You know exactly what you're getting yourself into before you even click on the listing. I love that. That is such an excellent detail. All right, so she has digital sewing pattern, sizes 0 to 30, B&D cup, or the paper pattern. Um, the Kila tank sewing pattern is a fitted tank top designed for stretchy knit fabrics. A slight racer back design gives this top a sporty look. Kila's deep scoop neckline and armholes are finished with a bulk free binding method that mimics ready to wear techniques. The Kila tank has several inches of negative ease, making it a great basic layering tank top. Super fitted, so your fabric is going to need to be stretchy. Kila can be tucked into high waist pants or skirts because it's sewn in super stretchy fabric. It's also great workout or pajama top for hot weather. Um, okay, great. All right, pattern details, which she's already gone over a lot of that. So we've got the sizing. These are the different files that you'll get. It includes tiled copy shop and um, a U.S. copy shop, which that's interesting. I've never, I don't know that I've never seen that, but that's not usual. I wonder what the difference between the two is. But no projector file. Um, paper pattern is this. Quarter inch seam allowances are included, which is a little scant for a tank top, but it certainly will help you with getting this sewn with very little fabric. Step-by-step -step instructions, well-suited for the beginner sewist who has some experience sewing with stretchy knit fabrics. The fabric, knit fabrics with at least 60% stretch and good recovery are recommended. Using a knit fabric, if using a knit fabric with less. I think that must be like a typo. Okay, cotton spandex and round spandex blend rib knits are ideal. Yeah, for sure a rib knit. Um, five to nine ounces, 100% uh, cotton knit fabrics are not recommended due to poor recovery. I love that she says that. Um, I also think like just kind of super dry. Well, I guess I'm talking about like the bamboo rayons of it all. Like that's probably not what you're going to want to make this tank top out of. All right, let's look at some of the photos. Here we go. So these are our line drawings. You can see exactly what she explained. A slight racer back going on here, a deep scoop, um, and a very skinny little strap. And then here are maybe some of her tester makes. Or I don't know, maybe she makes her own samples. I could see her doing that too, because these are all really beautiful pictures. Right, great classic tank top, but she has really sort of elevated it in a way and it feels very expensive looking. Um, that's what the paper patterns look like. And then back to the beginning, okay. So this is our size chart and finished garment measurements for the B cup and the D cup. So we are somewhere between, for a size zero, we've got 30 inches in well, let's go full bust. We've got 32 inches in the full bust up to 57 and a half. 32 to 57 and a half in the full bust. That feels, I mean, I know that um, the, the uh, size inclusive, like truists of it all love to have a, like up to 60 inches. Um, so she's very, very, very close to being like fully, fully all inclusive where everybody can make this garment. Um, I think it gets tricky for them because when they go up the two sizes she would need for that, I think it would require a fifth block. And I think that those blocks are expensive to, to create. I don't, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Maybe, I, I, you know what, maybe I can reach out to some pattern designer friends and ask them how, like, what's stopping them from going to, like, size 400, for example. You know what I mean? Okay, finished. Like she said, tons of negative ease. So the full bust is 26 inches. So that is a good six inches of negative ease. So you definitely have to have a super stretchy fabric for that. But your fabric requirements only go up to two yards, depending on what size you're making. So a great little stash buster here. Um, and a cute little basic. I love a basic. No twist here, but you know, sometimes you the others, like maybe your skirt has a twist. 
a basic with a twist. So you want to keep your top basic. All right, this is the Highlands Wrap Dress. This definitely made its rounds um, through the Instagram sewing community. A lot of people were making this, and I saw some really, really good versions of it. No one really jumped out at me as being like, you know, this is atrocious. So that's promising because I have seen that before where it's like consistently everyone who's posting, I'm like, does not, everyone does not see, does everyone not see the errors that I see in this pattern? Is it just me? Um, so yeah, this one seems to be pretty consistently good amongst all sizes and also abilities. The Highlands Wrap Dress is a woven dress with a faced V neckline, elasticized back waistband, and waist ties. Both the midi and the maxi length feature a side slit that begins above the knee and is finished in a wide mitered hem. All right, included in this sewing pattern is the option for bicep length sleeves or a sleeveless bodice with armhole facings. Um, as of last year, both the B and D cup size ranges of this pattern have been combined into one product. Oh, so she was selling them separately at first, and now they're all in one. I wonder if that was due to feedback or just logistics on her end. I wonder what that was about. Um, okay, pattern details. The sizing, which we talked about, tie, we already went through that. This one has a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Again, interesting that she's not doing the traditional 5 8 inches on like a somewhat fitted woven garment. Step-by-step um, -step instructions, well suited for the intermediate sewist. Mid to lightweight woven fabrics with lots of drape are recommended. Rayon linen blends, rayon chalet. Tencel, Crepe Machine, and Georgette are all suitable substrates. Opaque fabrics weighing three to seven ounces per square yard are recommended. I love that she's including this. I think that's going to be so helpful for you guys that are shopping online. Not so much if you're doing it in person, but, um, and then stretch uh, fabrics not suitable. And then you'll also need some elastic buttons, interfacing, and thread. Okay, I remember a lot of people, so I'm, I apologize about the dogs. They have the zoomies right now. It's like middle of the day, like the afternoon, and I don't know if their breakfast is kicking in. <laughs> um, so you might hear them in the background. Um, but, okay, so here's the line drawing. Again, this is indicating all of the facings. You've got a little bust start here. And this little tie, which kind of ties in the waist, but she also said it was elastic in the back. Um, and I don't have a back illustration, but you can see the facing. Um on the inside of the back of the garment so it's not lined um and then this long tie and then the slits and then the two different lengths and then two different sleeves as well okay so here are some makes let's take a look at this so um first things first it does seem to have at least on this woman the shoulder seam not so much right on top of her shoulder um, so that would be something I would look at, especially if you're making the sleeve version. And then also this does seem a little high, like, like it's kind of, you know, creating all of these fabric pools because her arm is like scrunching the fabric together. So this could be scooped out a little bit for her. And it also kind of rides up on her neck. We'll see if that is consistent among everyone, but this is really beautiful, sort of you know, middle of the road conservative, not too little, not too much, especially for their full busted gals. And you can see that bust start right here. I love the position of it. I love the angle of it. All of that looks great. And then the little waist tie. Here it is in the back. So yeah, there's elastic in the back and then this lays over that, I think. Um, which is interesting. I bet there's a cool way to like hack that to where this almost becomes the elastic casing maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But also there's some darting here I can see. I mean, this looks really beautiful on her arm. It's just not cut in as much on the front, I think. Here it is from the side. Yeah, this shoulder looks, well, I don't know. That shoulder looks kind of okay. All right, here is the, like, Mrs. version, and a really pretty, like, cotton. Here's the back of this one. The sleeve looks fine. Enough room or ease in the sleeve cap. That looks pretty good. I mean, there's going to be 
a little bit of wrinkling here because this is all being gathered into this elastic waist. And then again, really beautiful on her with the maybe the single slit. Here's another possible tester make. Yeah, we're gonna look at the ease in the bodice, but this one's definitely a little bit more like blousey, which I think she's probably having to pin this closed because I think I feel like this wants to fall down a little bit more. Here's another one. It looks incredible on these apple shapes, right? I think that it looks really beautiful on her. I love that yellow color too. And the hem, however that is done, the mitered hem, I guess, it looks really, really good. Executed very well. There's the paper pattern. All right, and back to the top of the um, photos. You can also see the facing here really well. All right, so size charts. We've got the two different size charts here. We're going to look at full bust. goes, again, from 32 to 57 and a half. So that's going to be consistent throughout. The hip measurement on this one um, is important, too, because it's kind of like a column silhouette. So her body measurement chart is 35 inches to 59 and a half. Um, so again, pretty, pretty strong there in terms of being completely all inclusive finished garment measurements. It looks like the bust has three and a half or three and three quarters inches of ease. So that would be considered like a, um, not loose fitting, somewhat loose fitting. Is that what they call it? Um, it's not close fitting. It's not loose fitting. It's in the middle of those two things. Um, and then the hip measurement, the hip finish, or the hip ease, sorry, is four and a half inches. So you can see it's a much more close fitting garment at the hip. That would be considered close fitting. Um, she's also got your, <clears throat> your bicep finished measurements. Um, so for reference, I would probably be making the size, I'm going to make it based on my hip. Dang, I'd probably be making the size 18, I think, and my bicep is 14 inches, so one and one eighth inch of ease for me. Um, I might, I like to paint that up maybe to two. You certainly wouldn't be getting the amount of ease that this girl has. That's, that's probably like two inches of ease maybe, um, maybe two and a half. So depending on how you like it to fit that sleeve, I don't like mine to be super, super fitted on the bicep. I just, you know, the range of motion with it, of it all. And then fabric requirements. Let's just ignore the 45 inch wide fabric. I just can't imagine you making it out of anything that's 45 inches. So three and a half up to the larger sizes are four and three quarters or five and a quarter. Yeah, it's a bit of a fabric hog because it does have that surplus bodice. And where were the line drawings? Oh, she doesn't show it to us without the sash. I wonder if there's a seam here. There probably isn't a seam here. Um, you could add one and then that would, you wouldn't need as much fabric and then the sash and the elastic in the back would kind of camouflage it a little bit. Yeah, but from what I remember, too, people were talking about how the construction on the inside of this was really interesting. Like, maybe there's a button over here. I don't know, but it is a true wrap, though. All right, now we've got this cute little top called the Elio Top. Uh, this is in sizes 12 to 30. I'm sorry, 0 to 30. Um, the Elio top is a fitted knit top with faux wrap silhouette. The neckline is finished with narrow elastic that allows the bodices to lay flush against the body. Of all of the knit neckband finishes, I mean, obviously a neck band, like the little itty bitty band, is probably the easiest. But I found that when I did this, I can't remember what pattern it was. It was only one of my sew alongs, I think. Um... It was the most beautiful, the most flattering, and it does really allow that garment to lay super close to the body. So love that detail. The hem is finished with optional fold over elastic so that it creates a smooth fit under pants or skirts. Um, three sleeve lengths. And uh, 
three quarter inch seam allowances, three, I'm sorry, three eighths inch seam allowances. So why does this knit garment have three eighths, but the other one has a quarter, that's interesting. Um, and then a three quarter inch hem, um, intermediate sewist, recommended fabric or mid weight stable knit fabrics with lots of stretch and recovery. Cotton spandex is ideal. It should have at least 50% four way stretch and nine to 12 ounces per square yard. Lightweight knit fabrics are not recommended. And then you'll need some elastic, some elastic, some elastic. <laughs> Lots of elastic on this one. All right, let's take a look at the photos. All right, so it is very like, you know, ballerina leotard-esque, right? And I imagine hacking this into a bodysuit would not be difficult at all. Um, just adding sort of like a bikini to the bottom but it is a deep v but look how beautiful that is laying against her body like no gaping nothing stunning even on a full bust gorgeous the shoulder seam yeah, this is kind of a funky shoulder seam too it seems to be a little bit angled toward the back and again riding up on her neck so it might be a little bit wide just double check those but look at her she's like dancing around and you can't see a thing Love it. That must be the same shirt on a different body. And you can see the shoulder here looks pretty good. Could also be the angle. But yeah, it's deep, guys. It is a deep V. So you were going to be showing, showing your cleavage if you've got it. She has hers kind of like pulled down under, like cupping her bust. Whereas... She has... Well, I guess they're all doing the same thing. It's interesting to me... Well, I guess it depends on your bra or how close together your breasts are spaced because she doesn't have any cleavage. And then we've got another one. This is Allie. We've got another one on her. It's in this white. Very pretty. I kind of really love the deep V. This That feels like twisty enough for me. You know what I mean? Like it's a basic t-shirt, but this little deep V really does give it a little bit of sass. And I would for sure convert it into a bodysuit. I can't imagine that staying tucked in very well. I'd love to know how long it actually is. Because I think most everybody had theirs tucked in, right? Tucked, 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 tucked. Everybody has them tucked. So I'd love to see how long it is um, naturally. All right, finished and, and body measurement. So we got the same body measurement chart, right? 32 inches up to 57 and a half. The ease is roughly, what is that? Three and a quarter inches of negative ease. So not quite as uh, like fitted as the first tank top, which makes sense considering the fabric recommendations. And this is where learning fabrication is so important. Um, because the first one you needed that 60% rib knit was ideal and it had those six inches of a negative ease. This one is suggested like cotton blends, cotton spandex blends and 50% stretch four way, um, and only has three and whatever, uh, three inches of e negative ease or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, and you can see here too, the bicep has a lot of negative ease as well compared to the woven that I, um, just talked about. Fabric requirements. Okay, so we've got a up to two and three quarter yards here. Um, a bit, I guess it depends on, does it depend on the sleeve? No, it doesn't. So whether you're making the short sleeve or the three quarter sleeve, it's all the same fabric requirement. So yeah, kind of a lot of fabric. Makes me think that maybe that top is pretty long. Um, because again, because it's cut, you know, these are all big chunks of fabric. Um, so maybe it is pretty long. All right. Next we have the Corum top and dress. This is a cutie. I love a raglan sleeve. You guys know that by now. This one again comes in sizes zero to 30. The Corum top and dress sewing pattern is a loose fitting raglan, ideal for woven fabrics with drape. This design features bust and shoulder darts for shaping. Bust and shoulder darts. Maybe on the top of the shoulder? 
Um, sleeve cuffs offer a clean finish and a curved dolphin hem provides visual interest. View A features a high-low hem while the hem of view B is even from front to back. Here are the pattern details. We've got 5 8 inch seam allowances on this one and a half inch hem, a little baby hem, um, which I guess is probably ideal for that little dolphin hem, as she called it. Um, okay, well suited for the beginner sewist. That's nice. Midweight woven fabrics with some drape are recommended. Rayon linen blends, rayon chalet. I mean, that's not a midweight woven, but Tencel, Crepe de Chine, and Georgette are all suitable substrates. It should have said light to midweight, maybe. Um, opaque fabrics weighing three to seven ounces per square yard are recommended. Pattern is not suitable for stretch fabrics, and then you'll need some coordinating thread. Um, yeah, I think for the top, you can absolutely get away with lightweight um, wovens. For the dress, you might want a little bit more heft and weight to it just to kind of like conceal you know lumps and bumps and things going on underneath but super cute detail again with the raglan and then you've got kind of like a neck band I guess and then the sleeve cuff and the bust darts and the curved hem here it is really cute this almost feels like bias binding though and a little bit closer on the sleeve than I would have imagined looking at the line drawing alone. There it is from the back. Oh yeah, see, here's the sleeved art. Really pretty, although I don't know what happened here and why there's a little pucker. Maybe it's a little bit long and that's why she's getting that, which is a little long on her. Um, and then of course they made this little sash thing here, which I don't know that I would make or wear. Um, there's the dolphin hem. So here's the neckline. Now I'm thinking it's a band that's turned under and top stitched, which is very easy to sew. But you've got your shoulder dart, your raglan sleeve, and your bust dart all in one photo. And then here's the sleeve of this one. You can see how much ease she has in the misses um, that did not translate to the um, plus sizes or the women's sizes. But here it is from the side. Here's that dolphin hem. Really cute. Very easy to execute the way she has kind of constructed it. Cute. I love it in this little linen. Here's a top version. Again, you can see the ease in the bicep. Not nearly as much as it is in the um, straight sizes. But it's cute, right? Here it is as a set sewn with some shorts from another pattern. I mean, the fabrication on this one is truly, truly endless. Oh, this is like the t-shirt version. So it's long in the back. I mean, it's almost tunic style, tunic length. I wish you would have shown that um, from far away. And am I expected to believe that this girl has all of that tucked into these shorts? I don't know about that. The dress, I was like, yes, yes, dress, get it, get it. And then all these tucked in tops, I'm like, sure. Just assuming they were like normal length. But after seeing this, I'm like, whoa, that is a lot of fabric to tuck into a high-waisted short. So something to consider there. Also, the dolphin hem, if you're just going to tuck it in, the dolphin hem is a lot of work <laughs> um, for no one to ever see it. So maybe consider just chopping it all off. Um, if you're just going to tuck in your tops. I mean, yeah, I guess technically you can see the comparison in the line drawings that this is the dress and it's knee length and then this is the top and it really is a tunic. Tell me she, no, I'm not buying it. That she has all this fabric stuffed into these close fitting pants. No way. <laughs> okay. Um... All right, cool. And then um, some ease for the uh, bust is a good seven inches. So it is a loose fitting bust. The hips though, when we get down to here, we've only got four inches of ease in the hips. So again, uh, loose fitting in the top and then it, you know, kind of is column. And so it goes down to just a four inch kind of close fitting skirt. And then the bicep here, they obviously don't, they don't provide 
body chart measurements for the biceps usually. Um, but if you remember correctly, I am a size 18. Yeah, wait, what is happening? Because, oh, are these the same? No, look at this. Okay, so, wait, 12. The bicep on a size 12 in the straight sizes finished is 17 and 5 eighths. The bicep on a size 12 in the D cup is 13 and a quarter. So that's, that's exactly what happened. That's why I wonder if that was on purpose. Like if you're full or busted, you like a closer fitting sleeve. I don't know. Does anybody, anybody have any speculation as to why there would be like a three to four inch, um, difference between the size 12 straight and the size 12 extended or the I'm sorry the B cup versus the D cup size ranges that's that's interesting to me um okay fabric requirements um yeah three to three and a half yards of fashion fabric there is an off chance on some of these like gauzes and things that you could end up with a 45 inch wide fabric but it's only a half inch more than the um 60 inch fabric so it's not like three yards and then six um, which we do see from time to time so that's the core on top next we have the monarch jacket and so many of you who were listening to me gripe about wanting a bomber jacket that buttons up the front sent me this option however because I'm super difficult I wanted it to button up yes but I also wanted a set in sleeve and finding that combination is like I don't know unearthing like a dinosaur bone or something <laughs> it's like impossible to find um so if you know a pattern I'm just gonna keep throwing it out there if you know a pattern that but the a a uh what is it called? Bomber jacket intended for knits um, that buttons up the front and has a set in sleeve, not a raglan sleeve, but a set in sleeve. Let me know. Um, at this point, I'm willing to pay you in Starbucks coffees. Like if you find one, <laughs> I'll send you a code for a Starbucks. Um, okay. The Monarch jacket sewing pattern is a boxy jacket designed for thick stable knits like Ponte and Scuba. This slightly cropped Cardigan style jacket has wrist length raglan sleeves and a bomber inspired collar. Optional snaps provide closure to the center front. It has several inches of positive ease through the bodice and is fitted through the lower sleeve. Um, the D cup version of this pattern features bust darts while the B cup does not. Perfect. Um, and then three eighths inch seam allowances kind of again all over the place with that. And well suited for the beginner sewist who has some experience sewing with stable knit fabrics. So that seems awfully specific, but we have stable knit fabrics with at least 20% stretch. Um, the collar should be sewn using a knit fabric with at least 40% stretch. Ribbing can be used for the collar if desired. Um, and ribbing is like a, you can either buy it like in little strips that are intended for this application, or you can buy it in like 22 inch tubes and cut it up yourself. Ribbing is a very specific thing. It's not the same as rib knit. You can use rib knit in place of ribbing, but they're not the same. <laughs> um, Ponty, French Terry, double knit, stretch fleece, neoprene, scuba are all suitable for the Monarch jacket. Nine and 14 ounces per square yard is what is recommended. You need thread, lightweight interfacing, and then some snaps. Let's take a look at these pictures. It is a super cute design. Very well executed in terms of like proportions and just making it boxy, but not overwhelming. I like this little fuzzy version. Yeah, we've kind of got the like Americana collegiate vibe going here, very on trend, even still, even though this pattern was released before the pandemic. But this I think is a Ponty knit, so you can get that kind of like smooth, sleek look, but still 
stable. And you can see here, she's not using contrasting fabric. Um, the last one she didn't and this one she did not either. And I don't think with the fuzzy one she did. Or maybe it was hard to tell. Um, so it's not like you have to go out and buy something special for this if you don't want to. This is two of the same fabric in different colors. Yeah, so there you have it. It is a really cute little jacket. I wish they would have cropped it a little bit more for her. It seems a little bit long. Yeah, it's cute. I can see why it's been so popular. I've seen a lot of these floating around the internet, or at least like a lot of people who have bought them. Honestly, I can't say that I know a lot of people who have sewn them up, but maybe. If you want to see even more photos, I'm sure she has like an Instagram hashtag for every single, yeah, monarch jacket on Instagram. You can click this and it'll open up every like Instagram post that's ever mentioned the monarch jacket. And then I, you know what, I've missed this on the other two, on the other patterns we've looked at. I wondered, this is more like a styling post, and this is specifically calling out Kaylee's, maybe like what fabric she used and stuff, or her experience sewing with it. So even though this is a like pattern, you know, retail situation, it's very much like a blog too. All right, so full bust um, ease is roughly four inches. The waistband circumference, which isn't technically your hip, um, goes up to 60 inches. Um, it's a little bit, it's more like your high hip measurement, whatever that would be. And then fabric requirements go up to three and a quarter yards and only 54 to 60 inch wide fabrics on the D cup. I think she probably talks about that here. Yeah, and then if you're making a B cup, you can use 45 inches, but only up to a size 10. I don't, I can't really think of many 45 inch fabrics that you would use. Like all those ones that she suggested all come 54 inches or wider. Okay, so that was the Monarch jacket. This, let me, real quick, I want to go see the Corum Top blog post. Oh, there weren't any. Okay. Oh wait, just kidding, here they are. Adding an elastic waist, kind of like hack. Um, find out what a linen quorum dress looks like worn boxy. So I guess it's just like, you know, pictures of her wearing it. And then how she created this set. So that's a cute um, idea for a post. And then for the wrap knit t-shirt-ish top, fabric and supplies. Fitting, most common pattern adjustments needed, and then specifically calling out Alexis's Elio top. All right, that seems really helpful, the fitting one especially. And then on the Highlands, we have how to sew. Oh, yeah, so this one she had a, um, like a sew along, and I actually pulled up the her YouTube channel. So she doesn't have a ton of content and she actually hasn't posted anything in almost a year. So this is not going to be one of those channels where, you know, like mine, where, you know, you get videos all the time. Um, but this is definitely kind of like a compliment to her blog. So she's got a Kila tank tutorial, I guess, and then drafting a Kila tank that kind of swings out. And then she's got this wrap dress series. Um, and then also, okay, so the Kila tank comes with that bias binding, which is difficult to sew. So she's explaining how to do it with knit bands instead, which I recommend for everyone. I tried to do it with those bias little things and I could not. It was a hot mess. So I recommend the bands for everyone. Um, okay, and so then we have a tinsel bla uh Highlands blouse, I guess that she cropped, so kind of like a hack here, and then how to shorten it. So how to shorten it, and then what that looks like. And then this is the Kila, which I think we're going to see that tutorial, yeah, video tutorials, right, those three that we saw, and then she's got hacks, how to make it into a long dress, how to make it into a Henley. So a lot of ways to kind of 
zhuzh that one up a little bit and make a bunch of different versions. Okay, now that I know that exists, I'll be sure to keep scrolling. All right, this is the Nephi cardigan, cozy outer layer with an easy fit, long flowing cardigan, has long sleeves and front neck line facings. Uh, designed for knit fabrics with lots of drape, it'll become your go-to cardigan for wearing around the house or while traveling on planes or long road trips. Um, pairs beautifully with leggings or joggers and a simple tank. So kind of like a layering situation. 3 8 inch seam allowances and intermediate sewist. Fabric would be fluid knit fabrics with substantial stretch. Rayon, bamboo, and tensile jersey with at least 50% stretch are ideal. 5 ounces or more per square yard will work best. And then coordinating thread. I will say, we're going to look at the photos and the fabric is beautiful. The way the fabric drapes, the way I'm sure it feels, it looks smooth and soft and everything. These fabrics are a pain in the you-know-what to sew with. They're a pain to cut and they're a pain to sew with. So keep that in mind <laughs> as we go through these. Um, I think you could probably go up um, to something a little bit more structured, like maybe with a cotton blended in and be fine. It's just going to be standing away from the body a little bit more. Um, I don't think those fabrics are off limits. Um, just know that they're not going to drape like some of these that we're going to look at, but here we have it. I think this is the um, set in sleeve, which again is falling off her shoulder. So that's interesting. I don't know if it was a drop shoulder. Let's see. Um, I can't really tell. I don't think so. I don't think it was intended to drop below the shoulder. So I would want to run up to her and just hike that up right on top of her, <laughs> right on top of her shoulder. Um, yeah, this one even sits on the very, very outer edge. So we might have, and I consistently have to check the shoulder widths on her patterns. But this looks pretty stable, right? That doesn't look super drapey. This might even be like a French cherry, which would be super, super comfortable. This one, very drapey, maybe an ITY or something living in that land. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, I don't know. Maybe it is a rayon. But you can see here how everything is finished. So you are going to see your either your cover stitch or your top stitching. I don't know why they did contrast thread, but I guess maybe because this turquoise was not common not easy to be found oh get it girl she made it into a dress of course love that cute little idea and then here's one now does this thing have pockets I don't remember her mentioning pockets maybe that's one of the oops one of the hacks that she has wait what is happening oh okay we started adding this photo and then we're back to the beginning right yeah there's the line drawing okay so, okay, so this is all getting, oh, wait, because this only is in the, no, it says 0 to 30. But you come down here, and we've only got 0 to 14. So, okay, was it in this thing? Nope, that only has 0 to 14, too. So, I don't really fully know what is going on with the, full size range because it's just not included here. Also, no blog posts. So yeah, <laughs> not that you really need a ton of measurements for this because the um, it's just so loose fitting and just, you know, drapey and all that kind of stuff. I mean, look at these, even on a size 14, finished garment measurements going up to 60 in the bust and 84 in the hips. So I'm not sure how she's having you pick your size. I'm maybe by the full, the high bust. I don't know. Um, but certainly you're not going to have a ton of fitting issues other than in that shoulder area. So that would be from like here. Like, yeah, your high bust up. That's where I would double check everything. And then, of course, check your bicep and the opening here. You don't want that to be too big or too small either. But everything else below the high bust is going to fit. Okay, lastly, we have the Lone Tree Jacket. This one is a bit of a beast, but look how cute it is. Lots of great details. Um, this comes in sizes extra small to 4XL, and we'll see what that translates to because it's the first time she's used alphanumeric sizing. So the Lone Tree Jacket and Vest sewing pattern is a lightweight outer layer for chilly weather. View A features a full-length two-piece sleeve with cuff. 
two-piece sleeve, okay? Um, BB is a vest with armhole facings. Both views include collar, front and back facings. So it's like a kind of like a grown-on collar looking situation. I don't know if there's a seam under here or not. And then this one, you have an option of adding a hood to either one of them. But you get a collar. It's like two layers. You know what I mean? Um, and optional hood, patch pockets with snap or button closures. Pairs well gloss and jeans for a casual utilitarian look. All right. Um, generous half inch seam allowances allow for optional seam finishes, meaning maybe like flat felt seams or even Hong Kong, um, intermediate sewist and mid-weight fabrics with body are recommended. Twilt, chino, corduroy, wax canvas, seven to 10 ounces per square yard. If preferred, lightweight fabrics like quilting, cotton, voile, or lawn can be used for the facings and lining. Perfect. Though these are not required. For a fun contrast, use plaid flannel for these pattern pieces. Midweight interfacing, twill tape and cording, snaps or buttons, a zipper, safety pin, um, metal eyelets, and cord stops and locks. So here she is again with the patch pocketing, the little drawstring waist with the, there's, these are the like cord stops that I was just talking about. Um, and then the stops are down here at the end. I think maybe I got those backwards, but, um, your zipper separating zipper and then facings or a sleeve and a hood or not. Okay. So here is a version not as loose fitting as I thought, and also a lot shorter than I thought based on the line drawings. But this collar, it isn't a grown on collar. There is actually a seam here. There it is, the hood. Um, here's another version on Allie. Again, very close fitting for a layering piece. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might size up if I were going to make this to make it a little bit more like a, I mean, you could not wear a sweater under this. Couldn't wear a sweatshirt or anything like that. You'd have to keep it to a t-shirt. Um, that version's, you know, obviously very cute and just showing the versatility of it all. But yeah, she's close fitting and really barely even touches the hip in terms of length. So this is not going to be one of your like full on coats. Here is our size chart. So we've got the bust supposedly has four inches of ease in it. Now I don't know that I believe that <laughs> the hips supposedly have five inches of ease. No, I don't think so. I don't know if I believe that or, or not. Do you see four inches of ease here? And five inches, I definitely don't see five inches of ease here. Hmm. Fabric requirements up to three and a quarter yards, three and three quarters maybe. But the size chart for, oh, that's a lot easier to read. The size chart for the 4XL or for the alphanumeric sizing is, Jesus, it's very sensitive, um, 0 to 20. So that means a 32-inch bust up to a 46-inch bust, which is not the same. Wasn't her bust sizing on the numeric sizing 56 and 59? I think it was. Okay, designed for 5'6", and designed to be fitted through the shoulders and arm size. And she is recommending to size up if you're in between sizes. Okay. All right. Something to consider for sure. Back to the beginning on that. And then we looked at these already, and then no hacks or anything. All right, so that is Allie Olson design. I'm getting a very, like, northwestern you know, Seattle, Oregon, like you're hiking in the woods, but it's kind of misty outside. You know what I mean? That's the kind of style I'm getting from this. All very wearable. 
but definitely a sense of earthiness and groundedness to everything, right? Do you guys see that too? Um, certainly a lot of great basics that you can incorporate into your wardrobe. This would probably, if you made one of each of these, um, well, there are no bottoms, so that would be troublesome, but, um, and then threw in a pair of shorts and pants, you could have one of those capsule wardrobes and just keep swapping this stuff in and out, um, and never have to sew or buy anything ever again. <laughs> um, so it's good, uh, variety, um, good basics, um, and really an opportunity to buy some fabrics and let them kind of tell the story. I'm dying to know what you guys think though. As always, leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you think of these patterns. I have um, here on the in slate last week's First Impression Friday, which was the Berta June collection. So if you want to binge another episode of this, uh, just click that on the bottom right corner of your screen. Otherwise, you guys, that's going to do it for me today and I will see you all very soon. Bye!